and really what I am trying to emphasize here is the, um, the in the about science uh, slide, is the amount of detective work that goes into figuring out various properties of stars. And, um, and there are some things that some uh, there are some things that astronomers figured out as they were observing uh, a spectra of various stars. So there are ones that we knew from a very long time ago, like parallaxes, um, and a lot of these techniques come down to technique of measuring distances because once you know distance to a star, that allows you to compute many other properties based on what we can measure from Earth and knowing the distance, then you can calculate a lot of different things that it's not available to you until you measure the distance to the star. So, so in these slides, you see a few techniques that's been developed. The parallax one, that's an ancient one. Even ancient Greeks knew about it, it's based on geometry. And the other methods are modern. Uh, the Cepheid variables, they were uh, noticed by one of the astronomers, I think at Harvard, um, that, that there seemed to be a relationship between this uh, oscillation period and, and the uh, apparent brightness of a star. And when she looked at a group of stars that were in the same, well, group, uh, not what we now recognize as a nearby dwarf galaxy, the, the small, um, the small um, Magellanic cloud. And so she noticed the relationship between the oscillation period and the, and the brightness. And since the distance to those stars are more or less the same, about uh, I think tens of thousands of light year, uh, she inferred um, from that relationship to the brightness to the relationship to the intrinsic luminosity. Uh, this is, Cepheid variables are one of the first uh, uh, standard candle that they started using, as in these are special types of objects that where uh, you already know the luminosity or you have some way of figuring out how they are, how much light they are putting out. So, uh, you can compare that with how much light we detect on Earth, and you can do the inverse calculation to figure out how far up away those stars are. So, um, so there are these questions of the variables, and the other um, the other standard candle is what's covered in module four point three, and so I don't think I really need to talk about that. So. You can look at the slide in module 4.3. Type one is supernova. This is another type of standard candle. It's uh, in some ways more useful than Cepheid variables for uh, because it's brighter. So it allows you to measure out to farther distance uh, because we can observe them from farther away. And all these get um, a summary of that is what you might call cosmic distance ladder. It's a uh, uh, I guess what it says here, <laughs> a set of interdependent methods uh, that are matched to measure distance of objects at different scales. And what's important here is that um, no one method allows you to measure, measure all the distances. The parallax is the most direct one, but those are limited in how far away they can measure. And uh, when the Gaia mission is complete, they hope they can measure out to 30,000 light years. Uh, before Gaia mission, which was launched in 2015, it was only out to like 300 light years. And, um, but this parallax measurement is important because it anchors other, it anchors other methods. So something like Cepheid variables, they allow us to measure uh, to quite a bit of distance, but the way we calibrate these distance scales is by looking at Cepheid variable stars that are closer to us. So we know their distance, um, we know their distance through parallax measurement and, um, and that allows us to, uh, and that allows us to calibrate this uh, Cepheid variable star scale. Um, so, and 
And uh, what I want you to spend time on is this uh, HR diagram, purchase prong Russell diagram. And uh, I didn't quite talk about how astronomers use the diagram to estimate distances because it all seemed complex and riddled with a lot of uncertainties. And I didn't want to get into that. So <laughs> that's why with, in these slides, I'm not bringing up hertz sprung russell diagram. But I did want to talk about hertz sprung russell diagram in more general sense of um, understanding the stellar life cycle. So, and um, I think one thing that we need before we get there is the mass luminosity relationship. Um, but before we get there, <laughs> let me just uh, have uh, one minute on this slide because it, this covers something that's not in your textbook. And it's not in your textbook because it's uh, pretty new. I'm sure the authors will write a chapter on this soon enough. And in a few years, they will have a chapter on a detection of gravitational waves. And um, this is, uh, well, detected first in 2015. It was decades in uh, in waiting. The LIGO that uh, LIGO collaboration that detected the gravitational waves. I remember uh, reading about them when I was in col college. So they've been working on this for uh, at least 20 years, if not longer. And um, this is the so the signal that they are measuring is the. Um, uh, ripples in space time uh, difference in the length of the two arms of the uh, the de detector the gravitational wave detector and um, i guess what i wanted to point out was just uh, how short this time scale is so they detect the gravitational wave as um as uh, two, either two black holes that are circling each other or a black hole and a neutron star or two uh, large astronomical objects that are heavy, more massive than our sun. As they orbit each other, they emit away energy in the form of gravitational wave. And this is kind of the last steps of that merger. As they circle each other, they, they circle faster and faster and merge. And the time scale here, it's really short. It's, uh, you know, it, it, this is, whole thing is not even a second. So from when the signal starts to get large to when they merge and finish, that's like a 0.1 second. And I just want you to point out the scale and have you think about something astronomical happening in about 0.1 seconds. And just leave that there and uh, and, um, and I, I remember thinking when they first detected the gravitational waves, um, what interesting new science they would do using that. And when I was researching, looking at literature um, last summer was one of the things that they figured they could use this for is as a kind of a standard bulb standard uh, candle, except they call it standard siren as a kind of analogy to a sound wave. By the way, just to be clear, this has nothing to do with the sound waves. <laughs> They're just uh, using siren as a evocative uh, phrase. Uh, but this gives uh, astronomers uh, one more independent method to double check distance estimates from other methods. And given the detective work that goes into doing this kind of work, it's good to have independent methods so that we can gain greater confidence on the results we infer, guess, um, calculate from other methods. 